la peste shot Welcome to Brighton Lights. My name is Val Aviv and uh, in this week's episode we're going to be checking out one of Brighton's most entertaining clubs. Of course Brighton is host to many clubs, jazz clubs, rock clubs, gay clubs, you name it. So uh, this week we sent Angie Mariani to check out a spoken word club at the Catalyst Club. Check it out. Welcome to the Catalyst Club. How did this start? The Catalyst Club, it was uh, an idea that had been buzzing around in my head for, for years and years and years. It's been running for six years now. And there used to be a, a scene in Brighton when I first came here in the late 90s of people doing spoken word nights and philosophy nights and poetry nights. And it sort of fizzled out for a while and I was missing a scene. I was missing a gang and, and meeting up with familiar faces and talking about things rather than just clubbing and going to see, see bands. And I think it came about through seeing Stephen Fry on Room 101, having put Room 101 in Room 101 and saying there's too much negativity and cynicism in the world today. We could do with a bit more positive stuff. Let's get rid of Room 101. And so it partly came from that, the antithesis, so the idea instead of people moaning about what they don't like, the grumpy old men thing we have on TV, I came up with the idea that we, we would, I'd create a club where people came and talked about things they were passionate about and hopefully inspire members of the audience to go out and discover and explore things that they hadn't heard about or thought about before. And it's been almost full every time. We've, you know, we've run it for, for six years now and had over 200 speakers and we've teamed up with various festivals around town and um, special events and um, it's still a joy to run. I still enjoy coming to it um, as much as I did the very first one. What memorable talks have been at the Catalyst Club? I think the most memorable was um, a young lady who came and did a talk on a song called Gloomy Sunday and uh, it's a famous song for people having listened to it and committed suicide and, uh, and she played all the different variations of this song that have been recorded by different artists and then did a rap version of it at the end. Um, I can't remember her name, can you? That was me. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things, oh yeah, okay, set that up. I did the history of 1950s men's magazines, um, the great cannabis conspiracy and uh, erotic comics. I just think it's a really great evening. You get to hear about subjects that um, you wouldn't normally know about. Um, you could discuss the subjects, have a drink in between. It's, uh, it's just a very interesting and gentle night out. We learn so much about so many unusual topics, like the giant squid or um, how to make a dry martini. or Because um, sometimes you get complete lunatics, you know, with conspiracy theories or mad religions, and you get very fiery questions at the end, which is wonderful. The best thing about it, I suppose, is the fact that you don't know what you're going to get. It's kind of the excitement. I've actually done a talk here myself, um, which it's one is one of the stuff ones. Well, I would recommend it to anyone if they've got something they really want to talk about to come along and just just talk about it. By the way, that, just so you know, that's the um, that's the hospital on the top of Elm Road. I consider that to be a landmark. Have I done 15 minutes yet? Brighton is the home to lots of musical talents. We've got the Kooks, the Levelers, Fat Boy Slim, you name it. Everyone in Brighton plays the guitar. See? and to hear about the Blue Light Initiative. Hello Alistair, so what is it? Tell us about it. Well, it's a band collective. There's about uh, eight or nine bands. A group of us realized that we were all friends, that we were kind of competing against each other for okay. nights and for, for, for uh, audience. Yeah. And we thought, why do that when we can come together? Uh, nine bands in total in the uh, collective. Who are the bands? Right, Who's well, we've it? got uh, Yo Coco, it's one of the bands that's in it. Um, the Beautiful Word, uh, Stars Down to Earth. Your band. My band. Um, Bucket Joy, Sparrow, Bird Eats Baby, the Bobby McGee's. Um, there's a girl called Hattie Cook, just a solo artist called Hattie Cook. What 
are the aims of the collective? Well, one of the big aims is to try and take bands that perhaps are making a different kind of sound than the sound that's big at the time, but are doing it really well, and are really earnest and are really eager and really want to work hard, okay. and to give them a chance to do that. We've got bands uh, verging from kind of heavier, melodic rock, all the way to kind of acoustic folk rock, to kind of very twee um, pop, um, to sort of dancey pop. We've got a good mixture of stuff. Thanks to Alistair Gray. The Blue Light Initiative is only one of the many aspects of the Brighton music scene we'll be covering. So keep watching. I've got just the thing. How about this? Too average. Too average. All right, what about this one? You've got to love too, this. Too short. Oh. OK, and, and this one, Bill? This has got to be the one. I, I quite like that one. But I don't think any of them really suit me. Bill, do you know what? I think you should have gone to Brighton Fashion Week with Alicia Moss. Mm. Mm. director of Brighton Frock. So you make this all happen? I did. Well, um, originally started as Brighton Frock six years ago, a little tiny catwalk show and it's now grown into Brighton Fashion Week, which is amazing for me. It's like biggest achievement to date um, and definitely the most challenging. So I'm really happy to launch uh, tonight with uh, Brighton Fashion Week, the first Brighton Fashion Week. Fantastic. And how does this vary from the years before? Well, la last year was a Brighton Fashion Weekend. This year it, we've got active, literally a whole week's worth of events. We've got um, the launch tonight. We've got the Trashing Show at the Brighton Corner Exchange tomorrow evening, which is uh, a designer, Jez Eaton. We've got um, the Couture Show on Friday evening, which is um, lots of different designers, inter internationally renowned and from all across the country. And we've got the Ready to Wear Catwalk Show and Exhibition on Saturday at the Corner Exchange as well. And a closing party on Sunday at the Hanbury Ballroom. So That's great. So a lot going on this year there a lot going on a lot and we've also got lots of different fashion installations and things going on around Brighton uh, we've got a fashion map which is great it's like your guide to all the fashion events going on so excellent what would be your uh, your tip for this week well it's really difficult to say because I love every show um, but I must say I did actually cry in the trash and show the other day the rehearsal because it is so beautiful I mean Jez Eaton is amazing, the clothes she can make. I wouldn't say it's like high fashion, it is recycled couture, but what she can make out of everyday mundane objects is unbelievable. I know you're modelling in that show, aren't you? That's right, yes. And you, you'll probably agree with me then, yeah. I certainly do, yeah. It is amazing. So um, I would say, for me, in a way, that would be the highlight, but I love the couture show as well. I love the fact we have it segregated for different you know different wallets <laughs> so like the couture show for the one-of-a-kind pieces down to the ready-to-wear show where people can buy clothes hot off the catwalk which is you know for the people who can't afford much and they want to buy things they see really like great couture pieces so yeah thank you very much okay guys that's all for this week join us each and every week at the latest where you can find out all about what's going on each and every week now we're going to leave you appropriately with johnny green's song women in the water it's all around it's all town of yours and if you're sure now